Hello, my name is Daniel Jones, and I'm a medical student at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health under the mentorship of Dr. Daniel Kanak in the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. And I'm here today to talk about the general assessment of eye trauma. The objectives of this talk are first and foremost to discuss the importance of ruling out globe rupture before doing any eye manipulation or further exam, and then to discuss the focused history, the focused past ocular history, and the elements of a focused exam in relation to eye trauma. To begin, I'd like to briefly discuss why this topic is so important. Why do we care? For one, eye trauma is very common and is seen in the primary care setting as well as in the emergency room every day. It composes up to 3% of ER visits annually and up to one-fifth of adults in the United States will have had a history of eye trauma in their lifetime. Thus, being able to accurately assess and manage these patients, whether that be in the office or knowing when to submit a referral to an ophthalmologist, is paramount to prevent permanent vision loss. This slide serves as a reminder that for any trauma patient, the ABCs should be performed prior to any history or exam to confirm that the patient is stable. After confirming the stability of your patient using the ABCs, the first crucial step in relation to the eye is ruling out globe rupture. This should be performed prior to any further history or physical exam of the eye. This is a very devastating eye injury and if not addressed appropriately, can quickly lead to permanent vision loss in your patient. Some things to consider when ruling out globe rupture are a patient with a suspicious history of hammering or metalwork, or a patient with previous eye surgery. Some signs that could signal an open globe include a peaked pupil or a shallow anterior chamber. If a globe rupture is confirmed, immediately place an eye shield, not a patch on the eye, as a patch can extrude intraocular contents with the pressure it applies and call ophthalmology immediately. Do not perform any further exam or apply any eye drops to the eye. After ruling out globe rupture, one can start the focus history in relation to eye trauma. One of the first steps in a focus history is determining how an eye was injured or the mechanism of injury. The mechanism is important because different types of injuries require different types of management. Some different mechanisms include blunt injury, sharp injury, including metalworking, chemical injuries such as with alkalotic or acidotic solutions, and thermal injury. After confirming the mechanism of the injury, another step in the focus history of an eye trauma patient is determining the timing of the injury or exactly when the trauma occurred. Did it occur a few minutes ago and the patient just presented to the emergency room? Or perhaps did it occur earlier in the day or several days ago and you're now just examining this patient? We can categorize the timing in a, as acute, subacute, or chronic, and like the mechanism of injury, the timing is very important for how we approach management of the patient. From there, after determining the mechanism and timing of the patient's eye injury, one last step in the focused history includes any associated symptoms the patient might be experiencing that could relate to their eye trauma. Some examples of associated symptoms include sudden vision loss or blurring of vision, following a traumatic event, double vision, has the patient had any bleeding or has any lacerations related to the trauma, is there any limitation in eye movements in any direction that started after the trauma occurred? Do they have any eye pain and how severe is that pain? And have they started seeing flashes or floaters in their vision since the traumatic event? After obtaining a full focused history from the patient, it is important to ask about any previous eye related diseases, surgeries or trauma as these can provide key clues to what might have actually happened to the patient. Some concepts to consider with a past ocular history include a patient with poor vision since birth, do they wear corrective lenses, and when was their most recent eye exam, is the vision changes they're experiencing now related to the trauma, or has it been going on for many years, do they have recurrent ocular problems such as inflammation or infection, 
are they a contact lens wearer and do they wear their contact lenses at night as these can be key clues into a patient with a corneal ulcer or a related disease? Do they have a history of recent eye surgery such as cataract surgery or corrective surgery? And have they had any previous history of eye trauma? After completing the focused history and past ocular history, one can begin the exam of the eye. The first step of any exam is inspection, and one should have a methodical approach for inspecting all of the eye structures, including the eyelids and eyebrows, the glands around the eye, the conjunctiva, the sclera, as well as the pupils. Some things to look for when inspecting the eye are any bruising around the eye, as well as any lacerations of the eyelid from the trauma, confirming the integrity of the cornea, the sclera, and the conjunctiva, looking for any blood in the anterior chamber, as well as looking for a peaked pupil. After thoroughly inspecting the eye and its surrounding structures, one can continue the exam with more objective measurements of eye function, including assessing visual acuity with a Snellen chart, as shown here on the right, assessing vis confrontational visual fields, looking for a proper pupillary response, and assessing extraocular movements to confirm there are no entrapped muscles. This slide provides some examples of some of those objective tests. On the left, you can see a physician using a pen light to assess extraocular movements in all directions. And here on the right, you see an abnormal pupillary response of the left eye, figure A showing an abnormal consensual response of the left pupil and figure B showing an abnormal direct response of the left pupil. After completing these objective tests, one can finally use the ophthalmoscope to examine the fundus for any pathology. Some things to look for include optic nerve swelling, any signs of retinal detachment, any type of bleeding or dot hemorrhages in the eye, as well as any evidence of vessel emboli or occlusion that could have resulted from the trauma. Lastly, after using the ophthalmoscope to assess the retina, one should perform cytal testing to assess for corneal integrity. Cytal testing involves using a fluorescein strip to apply fluorescein directly onto the area of a suspected corneal break. If this area turns more clear, as fluorescein is usually green under the cobalt blue light, one can assume that aqueous is leaking through the cornea. Now that we've discussed all the main elements in the assessment of a patient with eye trauma, I'd like to summarize the key points. First, noting that eye trauma is a common problem seen in all primary care clinics and emergency rooms, and noting that the proper assessment and management of a patient with eye trauma can save their vision. Remembering that the ABCs and ruling out globe rupture are important to do before performing any further history or physical exam of the eye. In terms of the focus history, making sure to determine the mechanism, the timing, and any other associated visual symptoms the patient might be having. Making sure to attain a full past ocular history, and then finally performing the focused exam, including inspection, obtaining a visual acuity, visual fields, assessing pupillary function, assessing extraocular movements, using the ophthalmoscope to view the fundus, and lastly, performing cytal testing. This concludes the presentation on the general assessment of a patient with ocular trauma. I'd like to thank you for listening.